Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, is getting its first look at the devastating flood damage from those heavy rains in July in the far northwest suburbs. The administrator of the Federal Emergency Management Agency is on Capitol Hill today being grilled by lawmakers. Think that they're going to give you help? I think so. I hope so. Every American expects FEMA will show up and when they're in the middle of a disaster and I'm Latest predictions show a major deficit of over $1.7 billion by August. 12 items FEMA will confiscate in an emergency. The Federal Emergency Management Agency is a Department of Homeland Security agency that coordinates disaster response and recovery and has the authority to seize emergency stockpile items in accordance with executive orders. These executive orders collectively highlight FEMA's board authority. FEMA's authority goes beyond coordination and includes the ability to seize critical resources during national crises. As a prepper, it is prudent to prepare in adequate numbers and not go overboard so that it is not perceived as hoarding. FEMA is authorized to confiscate these 12 items in an emergency, and if you want to ensure your survival and that of your loved ones, you should take this video seriously and prep wisely. 1. Food Items Food items are a must in your emergency preparedness kits to ensure you are adequately equipped to sustain yourselves and your families during times of crisis. In emergency situations such as natural disasters, power outages, or other disruptions, access to food may become limited or entirely cut off. Having a supply of non-perishable food items can be crucial for maintaining health, energy, and morale until normal conditions are restored. The types of food you should stock up on for your emergency kits are those that are non-perishable, require little to no preparation, and provide essential nutrients and energy. This includes canned goods like beans, vegetables, and fruits, as well as dry goods such as rice, pasta, and cereal. Other suitable options include granola bars, nuts, dried fruits, and jerky. It's also important to have a manual can opener on hand to access canned foods. Without access to refrigeration or cooking appliances during a prolonged power outage, individuals who haven't stocked up on non-perishable food items may find themselves unable to prepare meals or access fresh food. This can lead to hunger, malnutrition, and weakened immune systems, exacerbating the challenges of the emergency situation. You may be wondering if failure to stock up food can mean bad things. Why would FEMA want to confiscate food items if they're essential for our survival in emergencies? Here's why. FEMA operates within the larger context of disaster management rules and regulations, which may include provisions that permit the requisitioning of items in specific circumstances. In the United States, the legal basis for government involvement in emergencies stems from the notion of police powers, which empower governments to take acts that safeguard the welfare, security, and health of the public. While the federal government largely supports and organizes emergency response activities, State and local governments are responsible for managing emergencies within their respective domains. In extreme circumstances such as widespread natural catastrophes or health crises affecting the public, local or state authorities may proclaim a state of emergency, giving them greater authority to respond efficiently. These powers may include the authority to requisition your food items to address critical needs such as food shortages in the state. 2. Medical Supplies Having medical supplies in our emergency preparedness kit is crucial for ensuring our health and well-being during times of crisis. Whether facing natural disasters, accidents, or public health emergencies, access to essential medications and first aid supplies can make a significant difference in our ability to respond effectively and manage medical emergencies. First and foremost, you need enough medical supplies to make up a well-stocked first aid kit that is essential for survival during emergencies. It should include items such as bandages, gauze pads, adhesive tape, antiseptic wipes, scissors, tweezers, and disposable gloves. These supplies can be used to clean and dress wounds, treat minor injuries, and prevent infection. Imagine you're at home cooking and there's a sudden power outage and you cut yourself because you were disoriented from the darkness. If you lack basic medical essentials in your home like bandages, you may not be able to stem the blood flow or might likely get an infection from the cut. Without the essential medical supplies in your home, you may be putting you and your loved ones in jeopardy. In addition, essential medications can help manage chronic conditions, alleviate symptoms, and prevent complications. This is why it's important to include essential medications in our emergency kits. These medications can help manage chronic conditions. Various medications ranging from pain relievers to antacids to allergy medications have different uses for different scenarios. For example, Pain medications can help alleviate pain and reduce fever, which may be common during emergencies or following injuries. 
Allergy meds like antihistamines can help relieve allergy symptoms such as itching, sneezing, and runny nose, which may be exacerbated during emergencies or when exposed to unfamiliar environments. In an extreme emergency situation where FEMA has to be called in, medical supplies can be confiscated to prevent shortages. The Stafford Act grants FEMA the authority to coordinate federal disaster response efforts and provides the legal framework for the federal government to provide assistance to state and local governments during declared emergencies. In times of crisis, such as natural disasters or pandemics, the demand for medical supplies often surpasses the available resources. In such situations, FEMA can utilize its authority under the Stafford Act to requisition medical supplies from individuals to ensure an effective response. This includes the authority to requisition resources, including medical supplies when necessary for disaster response and recovery. When FEMA determines that there is a shortage of critical medical supplies during an emergency, it can issue orders to requisition these supplies from individuals. This may include items such as personal protective equipment, PPE, medical devices, medications, and other essential medical supplies needed to support emergency medical operations. Three. Radios and communication devices. Radios and communication devices are essential tools in an emergency survival kit, offering a lifeline to critical information, support networks, and emergency responders. Radios and communication devices are indispensable components of an emergency survival kit that every American household should have. It is crucial for maintaining connectivity, receiving critical information, and coordinating rescue efforts during disasters or crises. As a result, enhancing our preparedness and ensuring effective response in challenging circumstances. Firstly, having radios in your home provides you with a reliable means of receiving emergency alerts and updates from official sources such as the National Weather Service, NWS, or local emergency management agencies. During events like hurricanes, tornadoes, or wildfires, timely information about evacuation orders, shelter locations, and weather conditions can mean the difference between life and death. Battery-powered or hand-crank radios are particularly valuable as they don't rely on electricity, making them operational even when power lines are down. Communication devices like two-way radios or satellite phones facilitate coordination and communication among emergency responders, search and rescue teams, and individuals in distress. In areas where cellular networks may be overloaded or disrupted, these devices offer reliable communication channels, enabling swift action and resource allocation. With radios and communication devices, you can maintain contact with loved ones and follow them up in obtaining assistance during emergencies. They allow individuals to relay their status, location, and specific needs to emergency services or support networks, facilitating timely rescue and aid delivery. In remote or wilderness settings, devices like personal locator beacons, PLBs, or satellite messengers provide an additional layer of safety by enabling distress signals to be sent to emergency response teams, even in areas with no cellular coverage. In times of emergency, FEMA has the power to confiscate your radios and communication devices in your emergency preparedness kit. The reason the agency does this is in effect to bolster disaster response efforts. The requisition of radios and communication devices serves several critical purposes during emergencies. Firstly, these tools are vital for disseminating official alerts, updates, and evacuation orders to the affected population. By requisitioning radios, FEMA ensures that individuals have access to reliable sources of information, even in areas where traditional communication networks may be disrupted or overloaded. FEMA believes confiscating radios from individuals can help address shortages and ensure equitable access to communication resources during emergencies. By centralizing distribution and allocation, FEMA can prioritize the allocation of radios to areas with the greatest need, such as disaster-affected communities or regions with limited access to alternative communication channels. Radios and communication devices are necessary in ensuring you and your loved one's survival during emergencies. So to combat it being taken away by the authorities, it is best you get it now, before an emergency strikes and hide it. If you're thinking, there's no way there would be an emergency that would warrant you using radios and communication devices, it's best you think again. You should always stay prepared for any situation. 4. Fuels Fuel is a fundamental component of any comprehensive emergency preparedness plan, serving various essential functions that are crucial for your survival in times of crisis. There are several reasons why having fuel on hand as a prepper can ensure your survival. The importance lies in powering vehicles for evacuation, providing energy for generators to sustain critical infrastructure, 
and enabling cooking and heating in the absence of electricity or natural gas. In the context of transportation, fuel plays an important role in facilitating evacuation procedures during emergencies such as hurricanes, wildfires, or flooding. Imagine you've been asked to evacuate after an emergency has occurred, and the only way to transport your family to safety is with your car and you're out of gas. This is one main reason for storing fuel in the case of emergencies. Access to fuel ensures that your vehicles remain operational, allowing you and your family to swiftly relocate to safer locations, reducing the risk of injury or loss of life. Fuel-powered generators serve as lifelines for maintaining essential services and infrastructure when the power grid fails. Hospitals, emergency response centers, and telecommunications facilities rely on generators to sustain operations, ensuring continuity of care and communication during prolonged outages. Fuel is also indispensable for cooking and heating purposes, particularly in areas prone to extreme weather conditions. In the event of power outages or disruptions to natural gas supplies, fuel-powered stoves, heaters, and alternative heating sources become essential for maintaining warmth, preparing food, and preventing hypothermia. However, despite its critical importance, emergencies can lead to scarcity and disruption in the availability of fuel. Natural disasters, supply chain disruptions, panic buying, and infrastructure damage can all contribute to fuel shortages, exacerbating the challenges faced by affected communities. During emergencies, increased demand for fuel coupled with limited supply can result in long lines at gas stations, price gouging, and competition for dwindling resources. These circumstances can further strain emergency response efforts, impede evacuation procedures, and compromise the ability of essential services to function effectively. To reduce the impact of fuel scarcity during emergencies, FEMA, under the Executive Order of 10997, can seize fuels from individuals during emergencies to ensure effective disaster response and alleviate critical shortages. The agency has the authority to confiscate fuels from individuals to address urgent needs. Firstly, fuels are crucial for powering emergency response vehicles, including ambulances, fire trucks, and law enforcement vehicles. By requisitioning fuels, FEMA ensures that these vehicles remain operational, facilitating swift and efficient response to emergencies and life-saving interventions. Fuels are essential for operating generators that sustain critical infrastructure, such as hospitals, emergency shelters, and communication networks during power outages. Seizing fuels ensures the continuous operation of these facilities, safeguarding public health and safety, and mitigating the impact of disruptions on affected communities. FEMA believes that confiscation of fuel can address shortages and ensure equitable distribution of resources. In times of crisis, panic buying and hoarding can exacerbate fuel shortages, leaving vulnerable populations at risk. By centrally managing fuel distribution, FEMA can prioritize allocation to areas with the greatest need, ensuring that essential services and emergency response efforts are adequately supported. If you're storing fuel for emergency purposes, make sure you practice proper fuel storage and conservation techniques, and follow all the guidelines in your state to ensure you're not hoarding. Hoarding of resources like fuel can lead to FEMA confiscating your emergency preparedness ration. 5. Generators Generators are invaluable assets in emergency preparedness plans, providing backup power when the grid fails. Their importance cannot be overstated, especially in scenarios like natural disasters, blackouts, or infrastructure failures. The key significance lies in their ability to maintain essential services and comforts when regular power sources are compromised. Generators assure the availability of key infrastructure. To function properly during a crisis, hospitals, emergency response centers, and communication networks require continuous power. Without generators, crucial medical equipment would stop working, jeopardizing patient care and potentially risking lives. Similarly, emergency services like police, fire departments, and rescue squads require power to coordinate their activities and respond to emergencies. Aside from critical services, generators play an important role in maintaining daily life. They keep refrigerators running during unexpected power outages, protecting perishable food and medicine. In harsh weather circumstances, generator-provided heating or air conditioning can alleviate discomfort and health risks. Generators keep businesses running, reducing financial costs due to downtime. Generators also contribute to community strength by powering shared places like shelters, schools, and community centers. They allow these venues to function as safe havens during emergencies, providing shelter and assistance to those affected. Additionally, 
Generators power water pumps and sewage systems, ensuring access to clean water and sanitation, a fundamental requirement for public health and hygiene. The versatility of generators extends beyond emergency situations. In remote areas without access to the grid, generators provide a reliable source of electricity for daily needs. They support construction projects, outdoor events and recreational activities, enabling people to work and enjoy leisure activities even in off-grid locations. Generators come in various types and sizes to suit different needs. Portable generators are ideal for temporary use or outdoor activities, offering flexibility and mobility. Standby generators connected directly to the electrical system automatically activate when the primary power source fails, providing seamless backup power. Basically, generators become vital during emergencies because they provide power when regular power sources fail. This is especially important for maintaining operations in hospitals, emergency shelters, and other facilities critical to public health and safety. Without power, these facilities cannot function properly putting lives in danger and impeding emergency response operations. The major purposes of FEMA's confiscation of generators are to assist medical services, disaster response activities, and the continuity of critical services. Generators in hospitals and clinics keep life-saving equipment running and patients safe, particularly those in critical care or who rely on life support systems. Generators power emergency shelters, which provide lights, heating or cooling, and other basic comforts to persons evacuated by disasters. Six, firearms. Incorporating firearms into an emergency preparedness plan is a contentious but occasionally supported component of personal protection measures for both you and your loved ones. There are claims that firearms can play an important role in guaranteeing security and safety in situations where law and order may fail or when individuals must defend themselves and their property. Following natural disasters, civil unrest, or other catastrophes, Normal law enforcement services may become overburdened or disrupted. In such cases, people may have to rely on themselves for protection. Firearms can inhibit looting, burglary, and personal attacks while also giving a means of self-defense and personal safety. For example, during situations like Hurricane Katrina, there were cases where law police were unable to arrive immediately and some residents utilized firearms to protect their homes and loved ones. Having firearms can serve as an effective deterrent to criminal activity. In the aftermath of calamities, looting and house invasions may escalate. Knowing that you are armed can deter potential criminals from attempting to abuse the situation. This deterrence can help establish order and avert crime, so improving the overall safety of you and your loved ones. FEMA's ability to requisition firearms is most likely a result of the President's broader emergency powers and the Defense Production Act. DPA, which allows the federal government to decide on and distribute resources deemed essential for national defense, which can include actions taken during emergencies that threaten national security or public safety. In extreme situations where law enforcement and military personnel are overwhelmed, it may be necessary to control and supervise the use of firearms in order to prevent violence, looting, and mayhem. As a result of this, FEMA strongly believes that the confiscation of firearms from you will act as a way to maintain order and protect the public from armed confrontations. In some crises, it may be necessary to equip authorized individuals, such as police, National Guardsmen, or other security forces who require additional firearms to protect public safety. Seizing of these items and allocating them properly could be used to guarantee that these vital forces are well equipped. Finally, FEMA stops risky behaviors by taking your firearms. In very volatile situations, there may be concerns about firearms slipping into the hands of someone who could abuse them. Requisitioning firearms could deter potential threats from persons who may exploit the chaotic circumstances for nefarious purposes. Note that you need to go through the proper training to be able to use a firearm properly. 7. Ammunitions Ammunition is used in a variety of weapons, including firearms, artillery, and more, and it comes in a variety of forms adapted to certain functions and weapon types. Ammunition is essential for disaster preparedness since it allows for self-defense, hunting for food when a crisis lasts a long time, and ensuring readiness. Having a sufficient amount of ammunition, combined with proper training and responsible use, improves overall security and ability to recover in times of crisis, allowing you and your loved ones to better navigate and survive calamities. Adding ammunition in an emergency preparation plan can be critical for personal and community safety during times of crisis.
The presence of ammunition encourages the employment of weapons for a variety of critical purposes, particularly when the law enforcement and emergency services are overburdened or unable to respond quickly. Ammunition is essential for self-defense. Natural catastrophes or civil unrest can cause a breakdown of social order, increasing the likelihood of looting, burglary, and violent encounters. Ammunition allows you to protect yourselves, your family, and your property, providing a means of protection against prospective dangers. The capacity to protect oneself might create a sense of security and discourage criminal action. Another use of ammunition is when food sources are disrupted for an extended period of time, hunting ammunition becomes vital. Individuals can hunt game with firearms and a sufficient amount of ammunition, providing a consistent source of protein and other nutrients required for survival. This feature is especially significant in isolated or rural locations where outside assistance may be delayed or unavailable. Hunting, when properly managed, has the potential to support individuals and communities until normal food sources resume. In severe circumstances where civil order has broken down, the government, like with firearms, may need to restrict and manage the availability of ammunition in order to avoid violence, looting, and mayhem. Seizing ammunition could help to reduce hazards by limiting access to possibly dangerous supplies. During catastrophic disasters or national security concerns, law enforcement and military services may experience ammunition shortages. Confiscation of ammunition from people could help ensure that these crucial responders have enough supplies to maintain order and protect the public. Ensuring that ammunition is available where it is most required may be critical for coordinated defense and response actions, especially in large-scale emergencies involving national security threats or broad civil unrest. 8. Water Reserves Natural disasters, infrastructural failures, and extended power outages can all disrupt or taint a regular supply of clean water. In such cases, appropriate water reserves ensure that individuals and communities can meet their hydration demands while also maintaining basic cleanliness practices. Water reserves are an essential component of any comprehensive emergency preparedness plan, acting as a lifeline during times of crisis. The significance of having water reserves stems from their ability to maintain life and support numerous critical activities when access to clean water is impeded. Water reserves are an important supply of drinking water, which is required for survival and to avoid dehydration. Proper hydration is especially important during crises, when people may be exposed to harsh environmental conditions or perform physically demanding work connected to disaster response and recovery. Water reserves are essential for food preparation and cooking since they allow for the rehydration of dried foods, the cooking of grains, and the preparation of meals for individuals and families affected by emergencies. Access to clean water improves food safety and nutritional sufficiency, boosting overall health and well-being during difficult times. The key reasons FEMA may seize your water reserves are to ensure equitable resource allocation, to fulfill the immediate needs of affected areas, and to aid with emergency response and recovery activities. When a disaster occurs, such as a hurricane, earthquake, or widespread flooding, local water supplies may become contaminated, infrastructure may be devastated, and access to clean water may be severely hampered. In such instances, FEMA will step in to prevent an emergency of this kind while also protecting public health and safety. FEMA's right to seize water reserves is exercised in collaboration with state and local authorities, corporate sector partners, and voluntary organizations. The agency may issue directions or orders directing people or corporations to contribute a specific amount of water from their reserves to aid in emergency operations. 9. Transportation Assets Transportation assets are crucial to emergency response and recovery activities because they enable the rapid transportation of workers, equipment, and supplies to and from damaged areas. These assets include a variety of vehicles and equipment, such as trucks, ambulances, helicopters, boats, and specialty vehicles built for specific emergency scenarios. The reasons for requisitioning transportation assets stem from the necessity to address significant infrastructure damage, speed up search and rescue operations, and give rapid help to communities facing acute dangers to life and property. Following a disaster such as a hurricane, earthquake, or significant flood, transportation networks may be interrupted, roads may become inaccessible, and public transit systems may be rendered inoperable. In such cases, FEMA may need to mobilize additional transportation resources to address logistical issues and reach vulnerable people. FEMA has the ability to requisition a wide range of transportation assets, including trucks, buses, boats, helicopters, and specialty vehicles used in emergency response and recovery operations. 
These assets may be obtained from you as a normal citizen, enterprises, government agencies, or voluntary organizations, depending on the nature of the emergency and the availability of resources in the afflicted area. Requisitioning transportation assets enables FEMA to deploy personnel and supplies to places unreachable by traditional means, evacuate people from dangerous situations, and build temporary transportation routes to assist the flow of relief goods and emergency services. FEMA can improve community resilience and speed up help delivery during times of crisis by leveraging a diversified range of transportation options. 10. Cash Cash is a key component of any thorough emergency preparation plan, providing a dependable means of obtaining essential products and services when regular payment systems are unavailable or disrupted. The value of having cash on hand during an emergency arises from its versatility, accessibility, and durability as a form of currency that is generally acknowledged, even in the absence of computerized payment systems or banking systems. In an emergency, cash is often used to purchase necessities including food, water, medical supplies, and fuel. Local businesses may continue to function on a cash-only basis during a disaster due to power outages, communication difficulties, or disruptions in banking systems. Having cash available allows people and families to purchase important products. However, it is critical to exercise caution when stockpiling cash as part of your emergency preparedness strategy. Hoarding large quantities of cash might pose security issues and may not be practicable or necessary for you or the situations you might find yourself in. The key reasons for FEMA requisitioning cash from individuals are the urgent requirement to fund important activities and provide immediate needs in communities impacted by disaster. When a catastrophic event occurs, such as a hurricane, earthquake, or heavy flooding, local governments and relief agencies may face enormous financial challenges due to the magnitude of the disaster and the demand for emergency services and resources. Confiscating cash allows FEMA to quickly mobilize financial resources to satisfy key needs, such as purchasing disaster supplies, dispatching response teams, and assisting those affected with their recovery efforts. Cash reserves are required to fund a variety of tasks, including search and rescue efforts, medical assistance, shelters, debris clearance, and infrastructure reconstruction. Note, it is important you understand the various guidelines surrounding cash holding and hoarding in your state so as not to have it taken away from you when there is scarcity of it. 11. Equipment and Machinery The Federal Emergency Management Agency has the authority to confiscate equipment and machinery, particularly when there is lack of said machinery or when such equipment is urgently needed to support disaster response and recovery efforts. Such equipment or machinery found useful in an emergency evacuation plan includes cars, trucks, cranes, and even bulldozers. This means FEMA possesses the right to ask you for your truck if they need something to use and move supplies, or your crane if there's a blockade on the road from a storm or hurricane that needs moving, or your generator when need be. The grounds for seizing equipment and machinery from you revolves around the need to meet immediate demands, improve response capabilities, and hasten recovery efforts in disaster-affected areas. When a catastrophic event occurs, such as a hurricane, earthquake, or significant flood, local resources may be exhausted, and access to specialized equipment and gear may be restricted. 12. Infrastructure FEMA reserves the right to confiscate infrastructure like buildings from you as a private owner or a company during an emergency to serve various purposes. The explanations for seizing infrastructure pivot around the urgent necessity to provide basic services, house displaced populations, and build operational bases in disaster-affected areas. Once an emergency such as a hurricane, earthquake, or big flood strikes, many people may be displaced from their homes and become homeless while coping with the crisis. Taking infrastructure allows FEMA to use existing buildings and facilities from individuals, corporations, and organizations to satisfy vital needs and improve response capabilities. This could include converting private homes, commercial buildings, schools, churches, or other structures into emergency shelters, medical clinics, command headquarters, or staging sites for relief efforts. FEMA is most likely to confiscate your building if it's not in use. Nevertheless, if the building you and your loved ones are occupying is the only firm building standing in the aftermath of the disaster, you may have to welcome unknown visitors. Individual infrastructure confiscations may include temporary occupancy, lease agreements, or other arrangements to assure the safe and effective usage of facilities during an emergency. FEMA may provide direction and help to property owners to handle the logistical, safety, and liability concerns involved with hosting emergency activities on their properties. 
As you've learned about the 12 essential supplies that FEMA can and will seize from you during a disaster, this video will conclude by saying that one of the most important rules of being a prepper is to tell no one that you are a prepper. Get these products in moderation and avoid stockpiling so as not to risk your stash being confiscated by FEMA during an emergency when you'll need it the most.